everyone, Big Paulie back for another Star Wars review. Yes, uh, we are getting through them. Uh, today, I am watching and reviewing from the complete saga. And we are on episode number six, Return of the Jedi. The last of the original trilogy. Uh, what can we expect from Return of the Jedi? A big fat slug. <laughs> Lots more Boba Fett action, a speeder bike chase through a forest, lots of lovely little cuddly teddy bears, one of the biggest space battles in Star Wars, and Princess Leia in a gold bikini. <sighs> Let's begin, shall we? I shall put the disc in for Return of the Jedi and I shall give you my thoughts and my review after the movie. Show me the furry little teddy bears. Okay, so Return of the Jedi, episode six. Oh, yes, still as classic as I remember it. Okay, so what's the story about? So we start out with R2D2, C3PO, strolling up to Jabba the Hutt's palace to deliver a message to good old gangster, vile gangster, Jabba the Hutt, to release Han Solo from his carbonate to the hands of Luke Skywalker. Jabba doesn't want to give Han up because it's his favourite Christmas decoration. <laughs> so we get a bounty hunter turning up, threatening to blow the crap out of the giant slug. Obviously it turns out to be Leia who frees Han from his carbonate and Luke turns up just in the nick of time to be thrown down a giant hole with a Gamorrean guard and have to face the Rancor. That's right, another huge, big, horrible monster. Uh, one that I actually thought George Lucas might tinker with and maybe do a CGI on, but uh, he didn't for some reason. That is actually one alteration I wouldn't have actually minded for them to do a fully CGI'd Rancor. Jabba takes all of the gang out to the Dune Sea to be thrown into the pit of Carcoon where they'll be digested for a thousand years by the almighty Sarlacc. Another little bit of CGI tinkering with the uh, the Sarlacc, which works perfectly well. Um, and we can get a nice clear look of the Sarlacc gobbling off Boba Fett. All of the gang escape the Sarlacc. Luke heads off to Dagobah to catch up with a little green friend. And the rest of the group head off to meet up with the rebel fleet. Now on Dagobah, poor old Luke is now confronted by an aged Yoda. He was old enough anyway. 900 years. Yes, poor little Yoda on his last legs, where he spills the beans, tells Luke that, yes, Vader's his dad. And also Obi-Wan shows up as well, and Luke finds out that Leia's actually his sister. It's a good job nobody else turned up, otherwise he might have found out that he got a niece or a nephew somewhere. Luke meets back up with the, with the group and the fleet, and uh, they've got a stolen Imperial shuttle, which they need to take down to the forest moon of Endor, where the lovely little fairy teddy bears are, in order to blow up the shield generator, so that the force field can be lowered around the nearby newly constructed Death Star. Yes, still no Geonosians in sight. To make matters even worse, the Emperor himself, yes, good old Darth Sidious, or Emperor Palpatine, whoever you want to call him, <laughs> um, is overseeing the actual final construction of the Death Star. Han, Leia, Chewie and the droids 
get accepted into the bosom of the furry little teddy bears, become part of the tribe, and then they kick some stormtrooper ass. That's right, a big ground battle follows with lots of speeder bikes and catapults and, and rocks and trees and all sorts of stuff. And ATSTs, yes, all-terrain scout transport, I think they're called. And they manage to blow up the shield generator. Meanwhile, Luke is on the Death Star having a cup of tea with Darth Vader and Darth Sidious stroke Emperor Palpatine. That Palpatine did half like his throne chairs. <laughs> Palpatine announces that the Death Star's fully operational. Just as the Rebel fleet arrived, decides to start blowing ships out of the sky. Poor old fish fingers face himself, Admiral Akbar. Spurts out his classic one-liner. It's a trap! And you've got X-Wing fighting TIE fighter. We get A-Wing fighters, B-Wing fighters. If I was there, I'd say, here's me I-Wing fighter. <laughs> Sidious stroke Palpatine tries to seduce Luke into joining the dark side of the force by showing him that he's blowing up his fleet and the rebellion is, is doomed. And of course Luke and Vader start the ballot out with a lightsaber. Just when you think they're at stalemate, Vader decides to tell Luke that if he won't join the dark side, maybe his sister will. And Luke goes apeshit. <laughs> Never seen Luke so angry, battling Vader, eventually chopping his arm off and putting him down. Palpatine decides they'll just get rid of him anyway, so fires his little laser bolts. And of course, Luke's crying out, please, daddy, please save me, daddy. I don't want to die, daddy. And Vader picks up poor old Sidious stroke Palpatine, throws him down a big hole. Of course, George Lucas has to tinker with another bit of dialogue and we get another couple of no's from Vader. <laughs> Seriously, man, leave it alone. Luke takes his mask off Vader, sees his old pop, decides to take him back to Endor and barbecue him. <laughs> in Orlando and yum 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 on board the Millennium Falcon, fly into the Death Star, come accompanied by Wedge, knock out the power generator and everything and fly back out just in the nick of time before it blows up. And when that thing blows up, obviously you see all these little bits all crumbling down and falling down. So my question is, in the trailer for Rise of Skywalker, we see the Emperor's throne room and his throne chair, possibly in some big old watery surroundings. Is that maybe the other side of Endor? Because I don't think an exploding Death Star can actually travel too far. Hmm, I wonder if it's actually the other side of Endor. They all meet up on Endor at the end, all have hugs and kisses, and um, we get a couple of lovely flashback montages, especially CGI'd by George Lucas himself. We get all the familiar sights from the trilogy and the prequel. We get Moss Eisley, we get Naboo, with some Gungans, of course. Plus we get um, the Old Republic and all various other places. And the film closes out with a lovely little Force Ghost lineup. Yes, we've got Obi-Wan Kenobi, we've got Yoda, and we've got Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen? Where the blue now, Sebastian Shaw? Bugger Hayden Christensen, get him out of there. He don't deserve to be there. Put Sebastian Shaw back in that shot. And there we are, Return of the Jedi. One of the great Star Wars films. Yes, so what is really good about Return of the Jedi? Well, the opening scenes for the first half hour all set around Jabba's palace. All sorts of weird, strange, crazy looking creatures and droids. And of course, the uh, the Sarlacc itself. The scenes on Endor are great, especially the speeder bike chase. That's one of the highlights of the film. I actually like Ewoks. With Ewoks, it's kind of a bit like the Gungans. You either love them or you hate them, but I always liked them. Probably because I love teddy bears. We have a magnificent space battle at the end, which I think is probably going to get outdone 
at the end of Rise of Skywalker. And everything is just great in the film. The acting is superb, top notch again. Great dialogue. None of this midi chlorian crap dialogue. Are you an angel? Yeah, whatever. And of course we get one of the scariest villains ever. No, I'm not talking about Darth Vader. I'm talking about Darth Sidious. Stroke Palpatine. <laughs> Played superbly by Ian McDermott. He just emanates pure evilness. And the funny thing, that when I watched the prequels, even when he became Sidious in Revenge of the Sith, you're not, you're not really scared of him. But I've always been... I've always thought his performance in Return of the Jedi was terrifying. Really scary. You really are afraid of this evil Sith Lord. And I hope we get a Return of the Jedi quality Palpatine in Rise of Skywalker than a prequel Palpatine. Of course, John Williams, top at his game again. Absolutely fantastic. Even the revisions that he did. The new song at the end of Return of the Jedi. Um, it kind of feels like it's always been there because it's such a classic piece of music. So they are my thoughts on Return of the Jedi. Um, how would I rate it out of 10? Okay, so 1 being Salacious Crumb stuck to Jabba's bum. And 10 being the Emperor's Sidious's Force Lightning. Yeah. I would give Return of the Jedi eight and a half cuddly little Ewoks. Yes, not quite up there with Empire Strikes Back, but pretty close. So I hope you enjoyed my review of episode six, Return of the Jedi. Uh, if you like the film, stick down in the comments what you like about it, where it ranks in your Star Wars, what you do like about it, uh, if there's anything you don't like about it. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and share. The next film I'll be reviewing, we had to wait 32 years for. Yes. And it's The Force Awakens. Yes, it's The Force Awakens. So what do we get in The Force Awakens? Well, first of all, we get the beautiful Daisy Ridley. We get Kylo Ren. We get a brand new droid that rolls everywhere. We get James Bond dressed as a stormtrooper. And we get a return of Han, Leia and Luke. Although we really had to wait for Luke to appear, didn't we? Blimey, JJ. So I hope you enjoyed my review and I'll see you on the next review, which will be episode seven, The Force Awakens. And don't forget, if you're ever stuck, you're in a situation you can't get out of. It could only mean one thing. It's a trap! <laughs>